everybody! <laughs> Welcome to the Literati wrap up video! <laughs> okay, alright, so we're gonna go over some of the books and read alikes from the selection that we had last season. And at the end, we'll announce the new book for the new season, which incidentally is like next week. So we'll start off with the books that we did this previous season. Uh, we went over the originals, which is a nonfiction book and kind of a science-y how-to sort of book. Uh, books, if you like this book, I feel like reading Rainbow, if you like this book, other books that are kind of similar, uh, the Rita likes half of them I have read personally and the other half I haven't, but uh, I have it on good authority that they are similar. So, Lean In was big, super popular uh, years ago. Uh, has the same vibe, the same tone as the original. It's uh, scientific, and, but yet approachable. And has all these little anecdotes throughout the book. So this is about uh, women taking charge in the workplace. About uh, being more assertive, coming lean in, to the conversation that's at the table, to uh, put yourself at the table and lean in and not be a passive player in your career. That's what this will be. Quiet is also another book similar like the original and it talks about those who are more introverts and how, how they operate typically in the workforce and how they, um, how they can use that to their advantage. And again, it offers uh, science backing along with uh, case studies. And the second book we went over was the uh, Armada from Ernest Klein. We had read this together last season. And uh, Ender's Game, which is actually cited and quoted in the book, as well as by the author as a source of inspiration for his, um, his, his books. So here's the original. Uh, really haunting, very science, uh, very like science fiction. So some people found it a little slow but I found it haunting that it very slowly reels you in and then it just kind of uh, stays with you. And then the, the first book by Ernest Klein was Ready Player One and this one also got turned into a movie and it's more of a game-based sort of science fiction homage to the 80s and really the 80s more than the 90s uh, old, old school video games and the science that spawn, spawn those. Yeah. And then for one of my more popular videos, if you all remember The Lost City of the Monkey God, um, we have, uh, well this was the one that we read together, and the book that's very similar, which also was turned into a movie, with Tom Holland and some other big stars whose name I can't remember, it's just the important one. Anyways, this is a British book, or British expedition. So it's also a classic, and the way the people in the UK pronounced it is the Lost City of Zed. An expedition um, trying to find these fabled and legendary cities, and these were uh, British explorers, and um, some of them made it out of lag and some of them didn't. So that's um, really interesting. Into Thin Air, I read years ago. This is a uh, mountain, I believe, Everest. Expedition, yeah, Mount Everest Expedition uh, back in the late 80s. I'm oh, sorry, early 90s. And also a, tr a true account, true story, nonfiction. And it's found it a little bit more exciting and a little bit more thrilling, daredevilly, but also keeps your humanity in check at the realities of the survival uh, involved in these sort of things. Okay. And then we ran over Verena with which was the Civil War and the slavery and being passive to the things that are going on in history. And Gone with the Wind, for some light reading, it is one of the read-alikes. And this was actually based on the Mimi, Mimi Bullock, one of the president's wives, family Theodore, no. 
one of the president's wife's family. I have to remember what it is later. I'll put it down in the comments when I uh, when I call who that wife is. But um, her family. This is based on her family. Obviously, it turned into an Oscar award-winning movie. And if you want to read the original? This is it. We have it. And then another one also in the Civil War vein, also from the point of view of a woman, which is actually surprisingly uncommon to find um, in books in general. All these are fiction, by the way. So this is also Mrs. Grant and Madame Shirley, part of the uh, presidential uh, circle and their wives. And Bettyville was the memoir of a gay gentleman who's taking care of his mother with dementia. And that was the one we read together. The read alike is um, The Caregiver's Guide to Dementia. This is a memoir and this is nonfiction. And this is more of a, a how-to and um, for people who are, being, who are the caregivers to also make sure to look after themselves as well as the patients and best ways to handle it. And then this one is new called In the Dream House and it's also a uh, LGBTQ memoir and it's written very, I haven't read it but it's on my to read list. It's supposed to be a very peculiar but interesting style of writing. So uh, this was about a, a woman and her girlfriend and the abuse she suffered and uh, under her girlfriend. So I haven't read it yet, but it's gotten rave reviews. A lot of it has to do with the style of writing as well as touching on topics that normally not discussed. And then one of my favorites from this season was The House of Broken Angels about the Mexican family. Um, and the father who's dying of cancer in his last days and how it's more of go big or go home. Um, one of the newer books we have is Mexican Gothic. And it is one I haven't read before, but I've heard great reviews about it. And it has to do a lot with the house, the homestead, and the sisters, the women's role in it. I think it might have a touch of magical realism. I'm not positive. Don't quote me on that. This one, the Dirty Girls Dosha Club, also Hispanic, also Mexican. Well, some of them Mexican. Um, and it's much more contemporary. This is historic. This is more contemporary and it's um, a lot of fun, a little raunchy, but this is also a pretty old book, but it's a, it, was a, it was a good read. And then Slave Stealers, which is one of the harder books to read this year about child trafficking, if you remember that. We actually have books uh, available here at the library uh, called Predators pedophile rapists and other sex offenders, who they are and how they operate and how we can protect ourselves and our children. So this is a, a good book to, to get a feel for, for such a, a, a damaging topic. And this is a, a memoir of a, a little girl who was, um, who was part of child trafficking. And, it's actually geared uh, towards teens as an audience, so the, the writing's a little bit easier to comprehend. So for adult reason, it might be a really fast read. And then lastly, our finale book, Recursion. Okay, Recursion was the last book that we did, and kind of time traveling kind of sci-fi. I likened it to the suspense of Dan Brown. This is the book of Dan Brown that I think it closest resembles. If you haven't read Origin, it talks about the nature of humans and what we, what is, what is humanity? What defines us as humanity? And how AI can and cannot compete or take place. And then someone recommended The Martian. I haven't read this, nor have I seen the movie. I know it's tragic, but I hear it's really good. The tone's very similar to Recursion, and it's kind of got the um, atmosphere of finality to it and a little bit bleak from my understanding. So those, if you liked some of the books we read, those were the ones we had. So the next, and the very next book for the next season, I'm happy to pronounce, Super suspenseful. What up? West was giraffes. 
Uh, we're going to be starting a new season and all the books based on the new season will be new books. Things that haven't been published in the last maybe year, or year and a year and a half. Because 2020 is kind of a hazy area for most of us. Um, so anyway, so from like 2019 to, to present. So this came out pretty recently and it takes place in 1990. No, ooh, takes place in 1938. And it talks about um, the true events of these two giraffes from Europe where the zoo I believe got bombed and the giraffes live and they are bringing them over to the U.S. and from the U.S. over to like New York or on the east coast or from the U.S. Um, from the east coast they're going to travel literally cross land to California to be the first giraffes and one of the American zoos. So uh, it's kind of intriguing. It's got rave reviews and I'm kind of excited to read it. So this will be up in September. It's available now for you to check out, sign out a copy at Vista uh, to pick it up. We only have, I believe, 10, 12. We have 12 copies for you to sign out with and then we'll be put on the wait list. So, uh, so that's it. I hope you're excited and I will see you in a few weeks actually. Bye.